we have uh, an international presence among us. But um, for those that are not the speaker and just simply a member, um, if there's anyone that wants to share a little bit about, you know, what you're doing in AppSec, that would be great. You know, we'd like to have uh, communal par participation. Um, maybe you have some ideas on what you would like to see in future talks. Today's talk is going to be introducing an open source project on security automation, but maybe you have some different interests on static analysis or software composition or threat modeling or anything else. Um, mobile security hacks. Uh, so if you feel free to chat them or feel free to unmic yourself or unmute yourself and uh, share some thoughts, but we'll get started in about 60 seconds. And again, for, for those of you that may not know myself or Guled, who's with me, uh, we are the uh, OS Atlanta chapter leaders. I've been chapter leader for the past 15 or so years, and uh, Guled has been a trusted sidekick for, for how long, Guled? Uh, two and a half, I'd say two and a half, during right before the pandemic. Uh, yeah excellent excellent sounds good um so again you know i see a couple of names here some people i've met some people i haven't um i'm sure gula might know a couple of you but uh anyone want any requests for future talks for owasp atlanta or if you're a speaker if you have something that's itching you're working on a project maybe we'd love to get your name and contact information and and go from there anybody have any uh requests or uh, request a talk, do a presentation. Brad, I've seen your name pop up a couple of times. You, you, your name is now like Madonna. You know, you don't have a last name. So uh, I think it's the same. I'm, I'm assuming it's the same Brad or it could just be, you know, a, a handle. Um, but uh, Malik, I think you're, you're, I think I've actually met you in person at one point. <clears throat> All right, well, we will go ahead and get started. Um, let me first begin by introducing our speaker. Ishvan Albert Toth is our international speaker for today. He is actually an OWASP fellow project leader. Um, he is running the OWASP Sea Surf Guard project. And uh, he'll maybe it would be interesting for you to open up a little bit about that and then dive into the presentation. But uh, he is also head of DevSec education at Project Discovery, where they produce open source security automation tools for hackers and developers. And if you're like me, I was very interested in learning about uh, each fund's progress with this particular project, Project uh, Discovery, um, because of everyone's desire to do application security uh, automation, right? Not enough time too many apps and uh, how, to, how can we change some of these activities along. So Ishvan is gonna impart some of his knowledge and what he's been doing with Project Discovery. Again, Gulad and myself are your Atlanta OWASP chapter leaders. If you have any questions, requests, please use the chat feature or go into the OWASP LinkedIn group. If you haven't joined that group, um, please do so. And you can add requests, especially if you're a speaker, we're always looking for speakers. And uh, if you have requests for talks, again, please, uh, um, you know, make sure that you you make that comments either here or in the LinkedIn forum. Our official meetup page for those that are attending for the first time is on meetup.com. And then it's, uh, you can actually get to it by going to the main OWASP.org site, going to the chapters link, and then searching for Atlanta. And then we have our own project page there. It kind of shows past meetings that we've had. This recording is, this presentation is being recorded and will also be shared. So if you have employees, colleagues, or anyone in the educational space that would like to um, look at Ishvan's talk later on, then you know, feel free to share the link. We would greatly appreciate it as a chapter. And there is the official OWASP Atlanta chapter link. Without any further ado, uh, unless Gula, do you want to mention anything that I may have forgotten? No, I think it's great. Awesome. Well, without any further ado, the floor is yours, Ishvan, and I will go on mute. Great, thank you very much. And thank you very much for inviting me. Um, as I already mentioned to Guled, um, it's already like, I don't know, uh, 1 a.m. in the morning or so. If I do seem a little bit sleepy, please forgive me. 
I will try my best to stay awake. Um, today, I would like to talk to you about some of the open source security tooling that we are uh, developing at Project Discovery. Um, you know, a couple of words about uh, myself, um, basically what, what Tony mentioned. Um, I'm head of DevSec education at Project Discovery. I do developer advocacy. I'm also the chapter lead for the CS CS CSRF Guard. And um, yeah, I do have some um, experience being a security champion, technical owner, and uh, also as a lead developer at uh, FinTech Corporation in my previous life, so to say. Um, about the company, uh, who is providing the tools for today. Um, I would like to mention a couple of things. Um, we are a remote first company um, based in San Francisco. Uh, our founders met through GitHub um, within the Subfinder repository in 2019. So um, it kind of means that it is really important uh, for us to, to be part of a community and um, to give back to the community actually. Um, we had a seeding round at that point, um, which, which started with $1.7 million, and it was led by Signal Fire and, uh, you know, some other venture capitals. And um, not that long ago, actually, we also had our Series A funding, which we kind of limited to $25 million. So that's, that's a really good start for us. Um, we do have a lot of, um, you know, individual investors as well. Um, you know, former CSOs from big companies like Netflix, Google, Twitter, and so on and so forth. Um, besides that, our CTO, Sandeep, um, you know, it's just a fun fact. A couple of years back, while he was doing uh, bounty hunting, he was uh, top three on uh, globally on HackerOne. Uh, we also have uh, another founder, uh, Nizamu, who is kind of a, you know, whiz kid, he's only 19 and has developed, um, you know, a lot of, uh, or big parts of our um, um, vulnerability scanner. And we also have with us um, uh, Chris, who is Chris Sulo, who is um, the um, creator of Nikto. I assume you have heard about Nikto, it's been uh, around for, you know, many, many years. <laughs> um, if you are familiar with, with the InfoSec community, you might, um, you might know about people like Stuck Frederick and Daniel Meisler and, and um, so on and so forth. Uh, we do have a lot of positive feedback, Jason Haddix and, and um, you know, people like that. So it is, it is really good to see that um, people appreciate us and our tools. P uh, you know, please feel free to, to follow us and um, we will try to, you know, um, respond to your questions and uh, try to create new tools uh, that could help you with your automation. Some community statistics, uh, these are the updated values. We do have a Discord community of um, slightly more than 3,000 people. And we have, you know, 34K, um, 36K of GitHub stars and, and Twitter followers. Uh, besides that, uh, we actually do have like 72, 72 public repositories at the moment and um, more than 500 uh, individual contributors. Uh, today I'm going to talk about, so to say, our flagship projects. Uh, one of those, which is Nuclei, our vulnerability scanner. We have an interact SH tool called, um, which is used for out of bounds interaction um, testing. We have Subfinder, as I mentioned, it is used for uh, passive subdomain discovery. We have HTTPX, which is a multi-purpose HTTP toolkit. We have a port scanner. We have some DNS toolkits. Um, quite recently, we have added um, TLSX for um, probing um, TLS certificates. Uh, we also have our own proxy tool, and we also provide um, um, 
SaaS service, which is basically an internet-wide asset monitoring um, solution right now. So uh, starting with Nuclei, uh, well, um, it is quite a fast uh, and customizable vulnerability scanner, which is based on uh, YAML DSL, which makes it really easy for, for people to understand. And we do intend um, it to be used as, let's say, a, a common language between uh, different departments, you know, starting from developers, QA, manual QA, um, bounty hunters, security engineers, and so on and so forth. Um, because, you know, it is easy to understand and it, is, it can be easily used um, to, let's say, um, share different kind of POCs and, and so on and so forth. Um, the, the tool supports um, multiple protocols like HTTP. These are actually uh, most of the, the templates that we have are HTTP based, but we do also support uh, network templates, um, DNS, SSL file, who is WebSocket and even headless. Headless meaning, um, um, browser instances that are um, running on the background. We also do have workflow support. Uh, we just added, um, let's say, automatic scans, which um, let's say are smart scans or are intended to be smart scans, uh, which start with um, technology detection. And based on the uh, identified technologies, um, we are mapping the templates to be executed against uh, different hosts. Um, some other interesting key features, um, we do provide untrottled brute forcing options uh, as compared to maybe a couple of um, monetized um, vulnerability scanners who do not, let's say, provide the functionality for free. We have uh, our tools are really easily integratable into CI CD pipelines. Um, and as I mentioned, yeah, it can be suitable for um, different categories of people. And another important thing is that um, it can process, you know, thousands of hosts within a few minutes. We do have a lot of people testing the whole, you know, IPv4. Um, um, IP range actually uh, with, with Nuclei. Um, let's see. So how does a template look like? Um, it is a really, let's say basic one in here, what you can see on the screen. We do have some metadata about, you know, the outer severities and so on and so forth. And then um, it starts with the protocol, which in, in this case is, is a request. And you can uh, specify that, okay, you would want it to be, um, uh, I don't know, I hope it's visible by the way, um, that it's a get request against the base URL. And we do, let's say, have uh, terms called matchers or extractors. In this case, um, we are trying, or the template is uh, extracting uh, AWS uh, secrets from different pages. So basically, you know, it's a really simple one. If um, if the body basically contains um, an AWS token, which can be matched with with uh, this re regular expression, then uh, the tool will notify, um, and actually it will show it. It will show you on the screen. Now the whole idea uh, about um, or how can it be used in, um, let's say, for bounty hunters or for uh, companies and so on and so forth. Um, well, let's say starting from bounty hunters, uh, what they could do is they could, um, after they find a vulnerability, they can create a POC out of it. As I said, uh, the template format will be quite easy to understand, and they could submit that template to the company uh, who has the um, let's say, bounty uh, program. And that way, uh, it would be really easy for them to add to their regression cycle. So for example, if they would have a CI, um, they would add it to, to their uh, regression tests. 
and that you know basically would mean that they could rerun and re they could um, test for regression for the whole company for um, even hundreds of hosts and so on and so forth so this would basically become a cycle and each and every time when you find a vulnerability you can easily uh, automate a check for it and uh, you can make sure that uh, the same vulnerability will not be added um, in other other hosts right So in order to uh, actually make this uh, template creation easier um, or even more easier, right? I created a Nuclei Burp plugin. And as you can see on the screen, um, while you, you can do actually a lot of stuff with it and I I'm gonna actually showcase it um, in just a moment. Uh, what you would do in, in a basic um, use case you would just select something from a response for which you would want to create a matcher, you know, making sure that um, it would be basically like an assertion or something like that, uh, if you're familiar with, uh, with unit tests or so. And then it would generate you, it would take the request associated to this response, it would create um, the request for you. And actually, yeah, this is how it looks like. Um, it also generates for you the whole, uh, let's say, um, command line uh, arguments. So you can just copy paste if you want to, um, to your uh, terminal. And basically you can see this is the row request. So we have two options using, um, you know, the, the previous version where you can just say, okay, well, the method should be get and, you know, some headers and, and so on and so forth. Or you can just uh, rely on uh, the row request, and then you can create um, templates out of it. And in order to make it more convenient, I also added the op uh, the opportunity or the option to execute it directly within uh, Burp Suite. So actually, I might even show this really fast. So what you would need to do, um, at this point is you would need to go to our um, GitHub repository and download it. This hasn't been added to the B App Store yet, although um, the process has been started. Um, but a lot of people are using it. It already has more than 600 uh, GitHub stars. So what you can do actually is you might select, let's say one or multiple requests. You would just right click, go to extensions and let's say generate template or if you already have a generated template, you can add um, new requests to it by selecting the associated tab. So this is step seven, and this is how a basic template looks like. Now what you can do furthermore with it, as I mentioned, for example, I would just come and say, well, I'm looking for, um, I'm, I'm looking whether the server is Cloudflare or not. So what I can do is I'm just selecting it, go to extensions, and I do add a matcher to the tab seven. So as I mentioned, you know, pretty, pretty easy. You have a type, which is word in this case, I don't even need to create regular expressions and I can just execute this and I will see already that there are some matches, right? Uh, if I would want to debug this further, I, do have added let's say a filtering option you can see we have a lot of um we do have a lot of cli options so you can customize it uh, in multiple ways and one of the things that i did mention is with regards to throttling right so if i would want to maybe create um if i would want to let's say fuzz um this request what i could do for example i could just say like i usually do or you would usually do in intruder in burp suit, uh, you would add, uh, let's say some, um, some markers, uh, where, which one do you want to, to um, let's say fuzz, then right click extensions and you can decide what kind of um, attack type you would wanna use. It is actually um, the same value we are, we are basically supporting the same values that are uh, in burp suit. So I would, let's say, go with, with pitchfork in this case, 
and maybe I would add a couple of new values. Let's say Safari and maybe Chrome and also some other operating systems in this case, Linux and Windows. And in order for me to see actually the values or the request, I can just say, um, start typing request and hopefully, well, debug request. And now I can execute it and we'll see that it started, let's say, um, replacing values. So it started first with Mozilla Macintosh, then Safari Linux, and then Chrome with Windows. And of course you could change this to cluster bomb. And as you can see, I also added some um, auto completion to make it easier. And then we can see that we, ha we have actually um, some combinations. So it's Chrome Macintosh now, then Mozilla Linux and Chrome Windows and so on and so forth. So um, when you wanna create a new, let's say PLC, it is, it is really easy, for, at least for HTTP-based um, uh, templates to, to use this extension and um, um, even test it out and then share it with the community if you want to. Now, let's see. All right, so. So yeah, that's about um, Nuclei for now. And maybe I'm going to share uh, a couple of examples of um, Nuclei execution as well. So I wonder- Does anybody have any questions for um, Ishvan on Nuclei? If you do, please come forward. <laughs> this tool is completely open source, right? Yeah, it's completely open source. You can see that you can see it on, on GitHub. It is written in Go. And actually all of our tools that um, I will present, um, they are, well, mostly all written in Go and they can also be used, um, let's say as, as libraries. So they can be embedded um, in other um, solutions if you would prefer to. And uh, they are created to be modular so that uh, it could be reused more easily, um, basically across multiple uh, workflows. Uh, you if there were some people that were saying, hey, you know what, I'm really, you know, just enamored with my default vulnerability scanner. Can I, what, what sort of clear differentials would you say that Nuclei has over some of the more common, well-known, you know, um, uh, application vuln scanners that are on the market is—is is it simply, you know, some of the, um, you know, its ability to basically work with, you know, structure language really quickly, so you can you can templatize your types of scans um, in a more automated fashion. What would you say? What would you say in your own words? Would, would be the main differentiator that nuclei nuclei has over some of its competitors as tools right now i would say that it's freedom so you can configure you know almost every aspect of it and that freedom doesn't really come or i haven't really seen um, in other in other tools usually um, what i've seen um, providers um, want to achieve is that you basically just give in a url and you know magically um, the whole, let's say, web page or the host will be scanned automatically and, you know, it will generate you a nice um, executive report or, or whatever. And then you can uh, just check your checkboxes when you are uh, trying to um, comply with, with some ISOs and such. Um, in this case, um, what I must say is that we haven't yet added, um, let's say, smart fuzzing and crawling functionality. Uh, those will come later as, as separate tools. But uh, uh, as you will see 
um, later on is that we do also create these tools to be um, really easily integratable. And for example, uh, just to show a couple of um, couple of executions, maybe um, what you could do is in this case, um, these are all the templates that we have. So you can do a quick search on it, right? And as I mentioned, the public ones that we have, well, my bad. Uh, the public ones that we have uh, are um, mostly community contributed, right? But what we are doing is that uh, we, we do have a couple of triagers and we are making sure that no malicious or um, low quality templates are being um, uploaded or added to the public um, repository. But besides that, I've seen other private or even public repositories on the internet, you know, containing a couple of thousands of templates uh, that are uh, intended for specific use cases. You know, I've, I've seen one for, for WordPress, and they are creating a ton of templates on um, finding WordPress vulnerabilities and so on and so forth. Um, so, for example, what you can also do um, is you might want to check, let's say, um, vulnerabilities around a specific um, tool or provider, which in this case, for example, can be if I would want to search for uh, Jira and uh, WordPress related vulnerabilities, um, I can do a quick filter like this and you would see all of them and even the criticalities and, and so on and so forth. And you can even, let's say, refine this uh, further. So let's say if I would want to exclude the informational severities, then I can ju ju do just that. Or if I would say severity um, critical, then you can do such filtering, which, which is quite nice, I would say. Um, Moving on, if you would like to, to execute a specific, um, specific um, let's say, template, then you can also, there are multiple ways you can provide the template name and actually the relative path to it. But you can also say just, okay, I just want to execute the um, CVE for this particular, um, for this particular uh, vulnerability or template, and um, that would work as well. So for example, I do have, let's say, a simple Python HTTP server started. Um, I, I do find it easy to, to showcase stuff on it. So um, I could show you something like this, which is basically um, a template that contains some techno technology detection. And you know this is a really easy uh, scan, a basic one. And, you can see this is how the uh, output looks like. Um, it shows that, well, it detected that it's a simple HTTP server and it's Python, right? And again, it says, well, this is informational level and um, the protocol that was used was HTTP. Now, uh, some other stuff that we do have besides this uh, is that um, the update happens automatically, even for the templates, which are in a separate project. And we also do have, um, let's say, some optimi optimizations in place with regards to the templates. So if you would start and run, um, let's say, the whole template list, at some point, uh, you would see some messages like, yeah, I'm going to actually stop it uh, for just now. You could see that we have template clustering, for example, which kind of reduced, you know, 500, uh, more than 500 HTTP requests. So it's, it tries to reduce the amount of requests that it sends out uh, in order not to uh, bump, you know, the, the target. And besides that, we do have a lot of, uh, let's say, remote command execution um, templates. And what we, try to do usually is that we are um, demilitarizing 
uh, the payloads. And we are usually relying on, let's say, some of our services, which I'm going to be talking about um, in the next slides, um, in order to, to make sure that actually there is you know, an interaction happening without leaving the target uh, vulnerable or exposed um, to maybe other malicious uh, actors, right? Now, uh, some other things that we did add not that long ago is that you can also, so you might find a couple of uh, matchers that you would say, maybe, maybe, well, this one is not relevant to me. Now, what you can also do uh, right now is you can uh, actually um, exclude some of these. So actually it might be just a sec because it might be on um, on the dev channel. This might not be released, but you can do something like this. So in that, in this case, you will see that the X content type options, it is excluded from, from the results. So um, as I mentioned, it is, it is really easy to, um, let's say, configure it to your needs. And, um, you know, in this case, while I was executing it against a single target, um, this is quite trivial. And you might say, well, I can just filter it manually if I want to or whatever. But as I mentioned, usually people are, are executing it against, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of hosts. And in those cases, uh, these minor things can really make a difference. Um, okay, so let's see, going. Back. Okay, cool. So interact SH. Um, this is a service that is, I don't know if you're familiar with um, Burp Collaborator or similar, I don't know, um, Canary tokens or, you know, similar tools. Uh, it is used for um, usually blind, um, out of bound interaction testing, right? And it is a server and a client uh, pair, so to say, um, which basically supports um, the, the default one uh, that is hosted on our servers, um, has DNS, HTTPS, SMTP, and LDAP interaction. Also, we have different clients, CLI-based, web-based, um, Burp extension, ZTAC proxy extension, Docker clients. And actually, we do have Docker client, uh, well, Docker uh, images for all of our tools. We do use AAS encryption with zero logging. So once, um, let's say, um, an interaction is being pulled, it is 100% deleted from our servers. But if you do not trust us, or uh, if you might need to do, let's say, a um, um, penetration test um, in an internal, let's say, network that doesn't have um, internet connection, or um, you might want to be, let's say, stealthier, you can, um, you can use our self-hosted server, which supports some other stuff um, like SMB, Responder, and, and so on and so forth. Um, the nice thing about it is that it um, can also query, you know, uh, it can also be used for um, extracting cloud metadata. Uh, you can use custom SSL certificates with it and so on and so forth. So this is, for example, how the client would look like. And basically when you start it, you would get um, a randomized, um, a randomized, let's say, token or URL on a randomized uh, domain because we do have multiple ones right now. And then um, each and every time when a server, let's say, interacts with, um, with your payload, you would, you would receive um, notifications like, well, there was a DNS interaction or HTTP interaction and so on and so forth. And actually, this can also be used uh, to extract data from the servers as well. So for example, if you would have, let's say, a blind um, uh, server-side request forgery uh, that also has, um, I don't know, template injection or something like that with, with um, code execution, 
you could do um, like a who am I and then um, add, let's say, this suffix to it. And then basically at the client side, you would see the, the response um, returned. So if I would maybe show it to you, interact sh client. So let's just imagine we have a vulnerable application that is vulnerable to the stuff that I just mentioned. Um, maybe my payload would look something like, who am I? And then this, oh. and that would be all. I'm actually trying to mimic the server that would maybe look do um, a DNS resolution against the, the payload or, or something like that. And if I go back to the client, you would see that the information, which is you know my name, is um, is prefixed in the interaction. So you can do a lot of interesting stuff with it uh, that you wouldn't normally be able to do because you know in these cases probably the server is not returning any kind of response to you, so you wouldn't know necessarily what is actually happening in the background. Uh, another screenshot with uh, the standalone server that we have. Um, and as I mentioned before, uh, it has you know more listening options uh, in this case. A fun fact with, with regards to Interact SH is that um, you might have heard about Lock for Shell. It was quite a big deal in December, I believe. And um, basically based on the observations of the Fastly research team, the highest percentage of the requests used for identifying Lock for Shell vulnerabilities were using uh, Interact SH. Well, interactsh.com and sh, but we have also registered quite a few uh, afterwards as well. Um, but yeah, that was quite interesting. And afterwards, they did another research on, um, on um, what was it? Yeah, network callbacks, threat hunting network callbacks, and the new number was around uh, 57%, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, I can add you know, some URLs at, at the end. Um, that might also mean that some malicious threat actors are also using it. But, you know, what we would want to hope with that is that it, also, it only means that uh, the service is, is, you know, quite a good one. <laughs> so moving on to Subfinder, or the next tool that um, we have, um it's a um, passive subdomain enumeration tool right it's quite fast it it uses you know a curated list of um of sources and actually um we are quite ethical about our our sources um because we are not um let's say doing scraping on sites or or services that um let's say, do not allow to do so. So we are not trying to, you know, bypass those and such. So the results that you're seeing are, um, are legit. Maybe, you know, there are other tools as well that do some um, active crawling as well, and that might provide um, better results. But for that, we also have another tool. So when you want to do passive, um, passive scanning or subdomain enumeration, you know, meaning that you do not want to interact with the target, meaning that um, you want, you would be, you know, stealthy. This can be a really good option for you, especially because you will see later on that uh, it integrates really well with, with our other tools. And I will show you actually a workflow as well. So, um, as I, I did mention before, well, all of our tools, as I said, they, they are um, rather um, atomic, uh, can be used as libraries, and they do have STD in and out support uh, for integrating with workflows. And basically all of our tools, I believe, have um, output formats for JSON and, and file as well. So 
like example execution if you would want to to show these uh, well search for the um, subdomains for the hacker one uh, domain then basically you could you would see that in, in under two seconds you would you would receive you know quite a few domains uh, with regards to that um yeah uh, i'm going to showcase something um maybe a bit later on so moving on to our next tool it's httpx uh, which is like a swiss army knife toolkit for for http probing we do have quite a few probes that you can use uh, a few interesting ones maybe you know jarm hashes favicon hashes you can do uh, virtual host uh, probing http2 and so on and so forth and it also has uh, let's say so to say inbuilt technology detection which uses web web webalizer in the background so basically if you would execute this you know against um, the previously showcased subdomains um, and you know maybe using you would want to see the titles uh, on those pages and status codes uh, it would be you know quite a trivial execution that would give you a lot of um, interesting information i would say and i believe the, the latest version should also showcase the version numbers as well so you could even go further and um, try and detect more vulnerabilities based on the version numbers as well then we also have another cool uh, tool called nabu which is a fast port scanner but it only does actually scene and connect scans and the reason well this is not let's say a drop-in replacement for other um for other port scanning tools but rather we we needed something that was that was fast and that integrates really well with with our tools so um actually we do also provide nmap integration with with uh, it as well so normally when you would do a, a regular nmap scan um you would see i don't know maybe the ips um you know with with other metadata that you don't care about and you would need to do a lot of grapping and such well what you can do uh with nabu is that you are executing you can execute a scan against a specific target you can also let's say specify which nmap flags you would want to execute together with it and the output would be let's say uniform the ips and the, you know column ports so you can pass it around for other tools um, in order to to automate more and you know make your life easier besides that we have also added um, passive scan passive passive port scan which actually uses shodan um, in the background so um shodan internet db in the background for that you don't even need an api key so if you again if you would want to remain um you know stealthy then you can just use this tool and yeah lately we have also added host discovery uh, functionalities as well so you can do uh, with uh, that as well so this is an example if you would want to execute it again against hacker one uh, with some uh, nmap flags you could do you know you might want to do um, version checks and and stuff like that then you can do it like this it is really convenient and let me check do i have something with regards to this or not so coming back here i should have all right so for example the new flag that we have added was for scanning for hosts so basically what you can also do is something like 
some CIDR input and say Nabu. Uh, you might need to execute it with sudo. And let's say um, post scanning. Yeah, host discovery. So you can see that uh, in my local network, I do have a couple of live hosts. And of course, you can just do silent, in which case you would only see the IP addresses. And then you can, you don't need to grab anymore. You can just pass it to the next tool if you want to. And besides that, you can also do stuff like hackerone.com and say, I don't know, Nabu and passive. And then you can see, well, you did a really fast port scanning. <laughs> and then you can see the open ports on the hacker one um, uh, domain, right? Moving on to our next tool, it is called DNSX. Again, this is really similar, um, a toolkit that is for, um, for probing um, or doing DNS queries. And the nice thing about it is, is that um, you can use uh, your own resolvers. We do have Google, Cloudflare, and Quad9 uh, added to it. And you know it can be quite interesting if you need, again, somewhere in an internal network. But besides that, uh, we are also doing some, some rotation uh, with the resolvers, meaning that when you are trying to do um, you know, a lot of queries um, against a lot of targets, if you would want to, if you would try to, to use your, um, your own, let's say, resolver or your ISP's resolver, most probably you would kill your internet connection, right? And um, that way, you know, by using the rotation, you can get really fast results without actually overloading uh, any of the systems. As features, again, um, it also has STD and STD out. That's, that goes without saying. Um, we do have multiple resolver formats, so you can even specify your own. Uh, there is an automatic wildcard handling support, which is quite nice. And as I mentioned before, you can uh, use it for, um, for uh, active subdomain uh, enumeration using um, you know, word lists. So for example, um, yeah, you can also use it um, to do reverse um, DNS queries in this case, right? So for example, if you would want to uh, search for the IP range that is um, allocated to PayPal, then if you only have this and you would want to know these subdomains, then with this, you know, quite short, um, let's say, CLI command, you would get the results in quite fast. Then one of our new tools is um, that has been released like, I don't know, last week or so is TLSX, follows the same basics as HTTPX and, and DNSX. Um, but it's used for, um, let's say, data collection and analysis on, um, on um, TLS signatures. So what we have also added to this as interesting feature is we do have auto TLS fallback for older TLS versions. You can do checks for, um, self-signed certificates, you can do, um, you can identify expired certificates and, and so on and so forth. We do have multiple TLS probes and we are adding uh, new ones, you know, continuously. Um, some other new thing that we are, let's say, uh, playing around with is um, actually, let's say using or doing, um, Filtering and output formatting using, let's say, predefined variables or um, 
reserved words, in this case, host IP and URL. And we do also uh, have, let's say, multiple modes for TLS connection. The default one in Go is uh, Seek Crypto, and we are also using um, a ZTLS as well. So CTLS and ZTLS. So for example, if you would want to probe PayPal TLS certificates, then you could do something similar to this, right? And you would see, okay, what kind of, um, what is the TLS version that, that they are using and um, so on and so forth. It can be quite convenient. Moving on to Proxify. So um, this is again, a tool that we did not intend to be a drop-in replacement for other tools. We just wanted to have something that we can use to um, let's say integrate within our uh, workflows. Um, some interesting stuff though, is that for example, you could replay, you could first of all, dump the traffic that you have that went through proxify um, to your disk and then you could actually let's say replay in other tools like burp and so on and so forth so well it could be used um, in case you don't have let's say a paid, paid version of, of burp suit and you don't have access to uh, to projects this way basically you can um, you can reload a project that you've been working on and you have also some um, similar functionalities like uh, traffic matching filtering and even replacing now as i mentioned workflows right this is the interesting um, the interesting part so to say what you can do is First of all, you can do some passive subdomain enumeration using subfinder. Then on top of that, you can filter the inactive subdomains using DNSX, or you could even brute force to, to search for new ones. Then you can do, let's say, um, a port scan, searching for the top 100 ports. And after you, um, you did the port scan, you can identify the web servers using HTTPX, and then you can do vulnerability scanning with Nuclei. And optionally, we also do provide tool, a tool called Notify, uh, which can send alerts to Slack, Discord, Telegram, and so on and so forth. So uh, you can get you know, notifications on your smartwatch while you are traveling and, and whatnot. And on your VPS, you are scanning for, for um, thousands of hosts or so. And another thing that we also added is that um, you can configure Nuclei to create tickets for you or issues, right? On, on GitHub, GitLab, we even have, you know, Jira, Elasticsearch and um, Markdown formats. And even on the Markdown format, what we also did is for HTTP um, protocols or templates, uh, we do generate if there's a possibility uh, the CURL command as well. So if you're not familiar with Nuclei, you cannot run it for some reason and you don't want to you know, invest time in, in, in learning how to use it, uh, you will have in your report CURL command and you can just easily copy paste and make sure that you know, indeed the POC actually works, right? So how does it look like? Well, for example, if you would want to target example.com, actually this is one command, right? And these are pipes. So um, it's quite, let's say, straightforward. And in this case, um, we are actually just executing the CVE templates. Yeah, this is how um, the report would look like. This is Jira. And this is the markdown report in uh, GitHub. Moving on, uh, we do have a service called Chaos, which does actually continuous asset monitoring through internet wide scans. And um, what we are actually providing access to is 
Um, well, first of all, this requires an API key because a lot of people were using it and, and started using it. So we, we had to come up with, with ways of, um, let's say, doing some rate limiting on it. Um, but you can get an API key, key for free. Uh, you just need to go to our website and click on register. Um, although we would prefer if you would contribute like a template or, or something like that uh, in exchange. Uh, but that's optional. So we do provide a chaos client, which is, uh, again, a CLI tool. And um, with that, you can, um, you can actually access the recon data for public bug bounty programs. And for example, here in this screenshot, you would see this, this part is um, from our website, is you can even filter on, um, on programs that offer rewards. You can also do, I don't know if it's visible or not. You can select if you would prefer, you know, offering swags and, and so on and so forth. So basically, again, I could show something like um, chaos, minus D, and let's say PayPal.com. And as you can see, almost instantly, you will get quite a huge list of um, in scope targets for PayPal if you are doing, um, you know, bounty hunting for um, for PayPal or for that program, right? And the interesting thing about it is that you would also see at some point. Um, let me just check. There should be. Some other domains that are not directly related either but i might not remember correctly i'm not that familiar with uh with this program so yeah how can you use it well basically exactly how i just showed it but this is for for uber right now and yeah, that's uh, about chaos. And then, well, this is just a bonus, I would say. This is a wrapper tool that we are using uh, to make, let's say, um, querying Shodan, Census, FOFA, and, and uh, such uh, search engines much easier. Um, of course, uh, in order to be able to filter um, you would want you would need to have an API key on Shodan, which is you know um, kind of expected, but that this can be a, a, a really interesting uh, tool for that matter. So, for example, if you would want to uh, search organization, which is example incorporated, then um, it would come up with with a lot of um, results for you that you can filter to, to check for um, web servers, and then you can execute your, your, your templates against them. And then probably you would find, or there is a good chance um, that you would find you know, certain vulnerabilities. Although considering that a lot of people are using, and actually there are millions of requests daily made by, by Nuclei, there is a good chance that those would be uh, already, uh, let's say, reported by others. But, um, you know, if you're not a bounty hunter, uh, you can still do with your own uh, security engineers the testing. And once they have found something, they wouldn't need to write their own complicated Python scripts or, or C++ or C or whatever scripts uh, or code. You could just um, create your templates and, you know, add it to your um, version control system, and you can execute it against uh, multiple targets. So uh, I don't know how much time do I have, like half an hour, if I do remember correctly, Tony? Uh, yes. Yeah, that's correct. 
Can anyone hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you not hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, you know, yeah, you have about half an hour. Okay, cool. So before moving on and showing some other examples, um, I would like to know if you have any questions. Yeah, let's open it up to the chapter. Um, I know we had one person that had to drop, but uh, anyone else um, in the room? Sanat, uh, Joe, Kwesi, Matt, et cetera. some reason yeah okay hey there uh, uh thank you thank you for this presentation um I'm, I'm over at GitLab and i and i appreciate this this walkthrough here um sort of on the engineering side uh, when it comes to setting up automation in the pipelines um, I'm curious to see if your team has any templates that you've designed for either like github actions or even GitLab ci cd um or if, if we do there's have. any okay yeah we do have actually um we even had one that kind of covered the whole workflow, but uh, since people started misusing it, that was actually taken down. But if you would go to our uh, GitHub um, organization and search for actions from here, yeah, you would see that we have, let's say for, for all the major tools, Nice. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. By the way, in the meantime, um, if you would have questions later on, you know, I know it's it's a lot to digest. Uh, I, I kind of went through a lot of a lot of information. Uh, you can reach out to me uh, on on Twitter or through mail, and we do also have this quite awesome uh, community on Discord. And you know there is a really good chance if you if you put your question, then um, someone will will be able to to help you out. And we do also take uh, feature requests and um, you know contributions even on the code side, and you know reporting bugs and so on and so forth. And also it is worth mentioning if um, if someone would be interested, you know. In, in getting into the infosec um let's say community or the whole uh infosec um, um let's say job market uh, we have had a couple of contributors who have been offered um jobs at at large companies just because they have seen that they have contributed a lot of templates and from that they already knew that that person has uh, you know the expertise to create network templates, you know, all kind of web stuff and so on and so forth. So that was that was quite a, a nice thing to to hear and learn. It's a good way to get into infosec, and actually that's how I also became um, um, an OWASP leader as well because I, I needed some features uh, in CSRF guard, which were, which were not there. And I actually ended up refactoring the whole project and creating a new uh, major version out of it. And yeah, well, it was kind of dead before, um, but yeah, I've been offered afterwards, you know, uh, if, we want, if I would want to be a co-lead and yeah, I kind of expected so. It's 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 kind of a nice you know feeling to to give back to the community. Yeah, and I know there's a lot of people that are listening here, whether it be through this live um, session or through the recorded session, that um, you know are trying to get into AppSec or trying to get into InfoSec, and you know this is one of the few, I think, industries because it's not like you know if you want to be a CFP or a CPA or you know, stock trader that you, you know, partake in a project or open forum and then boom, you're in. Um, the, you know, this industry is what you make out of it. And what each one said is exactly how, you know, I got in as well. There was a, a dormant project, 
you, you take over it and you devote some time and it builds a path for you. And most importantly, it, it allows you to, to, um, to really um, unleash your passion, right? And there's gonna be a lot of bumps in the road, but as Ishvan mentioned, it's gonna allow you to uh, solidify your expertise, or at least your dedication and employers and the community will also appreciate that. So um, 15, nearly 20 years of being an OWAS myself and, and um, you know, partaking in the global community in different countries in Greece and Portugal and South Korea, it's been phenomenal. So if you wanna take that ride, I know there's some of you that, you know, might be looking for a next start, start um it's important to uh, you just dive in right there's too much hesitation oftentimes from people that are trying to get in but uh good feedback you should find a great presentation and um if you have any questions feel free to reach out to him on dm via twitter at forge hall pass but thanks again each fun uh each fun for everything and i'll i guess i'll be seeing you in a couple of days yeah definitely and if you are still interested i could show maybe a couple of other um examples as well absolutely just wanted, just wanted yeah. to to hear you know uh, if, if anyone has any questions that sounds great have at it yeah. so let's see um just a sec let's search for an interesting one so yeah so when i was telling about um http probing and such i i kind of mentioned uh fev icons and and jarm hashes and such you know and why it can be interesting so for example what i could do is i could grab you know, I just I just take and Google in this case. I could just take the hash of the fev icon that uh, Google uses, and what I can do right now afterwards is I can just do a search on Shodan, for example, uncover the query, and it's fev icon dot hash, and well, my bad. You could just oh, come on. Maybe I'm going to just copy it like that. And hopefully, yeah, I would actually see a lot of posts that um, are related to Google because they are using the same fab icon, right? So this can be a really interesting way to expand your um your um asset scope so to say right and something similar could be achieved with with the jarm hashes as well so if i would search for well jarm hashes are, are used usually for um, tls fingerprinting um, it can be used to detect malicious servers and such but in this case, I'm actually calculating the JARM hash for hacker one. And again, if I would want to do uncover search with uh, SSL.JARM, then I would be able to identify similar servers. So that's quite interesting. And again, after you have this, Basically, what you could also do in, in Shodan, you have the option to search for, for vulnerabilities. And actually, there was a, a nice example here. But for some reason, I believe um, it doesn't work anymore. But in order just to give a, uh, an idea, I'm not going to execute it because I'm not on a VPS. Um, and, you know it's not really a good idea to execute you know scans against um, unknown targets without um, having you know the approval from from the owners but you could do something similar to this so basically you would search for um, this particular vulnerability and then you could actually just pass it to uncover to, to search on 
you know, sends this FOFA shoulder and such, identify the web servers. Of course, you could, um, these are, let's say, the easy straightforward examples, but you could uh, give a lot of um, fine tuning around this. You could, you could add, you know, custom ports if you would want to and so on and so forth. And then uh, after Shodan would return, you know, a lot of hosts, hopefully, with, with this assumed vulnerability, you know, it did maybe technology detection based on, uh, based on um, all kinds of probes and, and, and version checks and so on. What you could do is um, you could actually uh, make sure that that assumed vulnerability is indeed present, right? So based on that, uh, you could do such uh, nice, let's say, um, executions or searches. Um, what else? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm curious um, to know in the group, anybody, um, has anybody used JARM hashes before, you know, for work or just in your research? I'll take a no on the silence, but I was just curious. Yeah, that could be quite interesting, actually. And um, there are also some other similar hashes as well, or, you know, TLS fingerprinting, which we might add or probably intend to add in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time I, I got interested in, in JAWS and JAW3S hashes, I believe it's called, uh, when I had uh, a target on the cloud, which was behind Cloudflare, and I wasn't able to execute my uh, payloads or send my payloads through Burp Suite because, um, because Cloudflare detected that I'm using, um, well, actually Burp Suite and, and not a, a simple browser, and it uh, prevented or actually banned my IP um, at that particular time. And I was really curious, you know, how did Cloudflare know that I'm not using a browser? Because, you know, I changed the user agent and did, you know, um, all, the, all the hoops. Um, and actually, at that point, it was, I don't know, two years ago, three years ago, I had to do my own scripts in uh, throughout the browser using the fetch API in order to actually send out my, my, my payloads. But uh, that kind of um, got me and got me interested in, in this. So maybe we are going to, um, let's say, publish some tools with regards to, to this topic that could be really interesting. That's very cool. Well, we'd love to have you um, do another presentation on that specific issue in the future. Yeah, definitely. I actually do have some, so since I, I've actually presented part of this presentation at another OVAS chapter, um, since it was too much, and actually that was a shorter presentation uh, at that time, uh, we, we kind of decided, or I have been asked to do some recurring, um, let's say, more in-depth presentations on these tools, because uh, as you can imagine, I, I haven't went um, too deep with these. Yeah, that but, sounds good. You know, if someone is interested, you can always find me on, on the links that I have uh, shown before. So another example, uh, in the meantime, Please go ahead and um, you know share if you if you want to or ask. Um, I just wanted to to showcase another you know workflow against HackerOne where I'm I'm, I'm searching for for the subdomains, um, doing the the validation, doing a, a passive port scan, and then actually checking for um, for the HTTP headers that might be missing or are are misconfigured, right? And as you can see, uh, it went quite fast. And yeah, there were 17 subdomains. So 
you know, it can be really, really convenient. Okay, excellent. Sounds good. Well, um, last chance for any questions uh, via the chat or, you know, out loud. We have a relatively shy group here for you, Ishan, but uh, <laughs> that everyone has been very appreciative of the of the presentation and on behalf of everybody in the OS of Atlanta chapter, I thank you for your time and staying up so late um, and uh, from, from your local time. And uh, we look forward to the next time that we could host you in OWASP Atlanta. Thank you very much again for having me and you know, for people for joining. Please do feel free to, to reach out to me. And yeah, Tony, we are going to, you know, looking forward to meeting you next week. Sounds great. We'll take care, everybody. And thanks so much, Ishvan. And uh, um, we'll, until next time. And if remember that this is being recorded, so we will share this out. So if you have colleagues and friends, please be on the lookout on the um, uh, LinkedIn uh, OWASP Atlanta page, as well as the meetup. And we will share the link so that you can share with colleagues that may have missed out and tell them to um, visit us next time that OWASP Atlanta has a talk. We appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Ishan. Thanks. Bye Take bye. Care. Bye bye. Take care. Take care, everyone.